Good evening. Greece is just an hour away from missing a repayment on a major loan, raising the prospect of a formal default and possible exit from the euro. Athens was meant to repay more than £1 billion to the International Monetary Fund by 11 o'clock tonight. But the Greek government has already said that that is not going to happen. A short while ago, Greek ministers did ask for the repayment deadline to be extended, as our Europe editor Katia Adler tells us. Tension was high in Athens today, with people here acutely aware that their future hangs in the balance. The streets here were alive with talk of a new Greek proposal to its creditors and a possible deal round the corner. These demonstrators gathered close to Parliament, shouting a loud yes to Europe and the Euro. The skies above may be stormy, but that hasn't dampened the passion of these protesters. They've been shouting, we're staying in Europe, yes, yes, yes. For this crowd, the details of a deal with Greece's creditors are less important. They disagree with their government on that. The priority here is just make sure that Greece stays inside the Eurozone. The important thing is to be in Europe and share the European values. And this is what is at stake in Greece at this moment. Greece belongs to Europe. We need the euro because we are a poor country. And Greece is about to get even poorer with the official end tonight of its current bailout deal. The Greek Prime Minister called his cabinet together this evening for an urgent meeting. But in public, at least, the message was tirelessly upbeat. If you were a betting man, could there still be a deal before Sunday? The EU always sorts things out from the Thatcher's rebate and so many other episodes at one minute before midnight. Is the question, do you think that it is likely yet again we'll find a solution one minute before midnight? Then I think there is um, a, a good probability that that will happen. But a last minute deal between Greece and its creditors is as yet nowhere in sight. Earlier in the day, in this less well healed part of town, we found shoppers decidedly indifferent to political rumours. Here, reality bites. People were working out what they could or couldn't afford to buy. Marcus is desperately trying to sell these cherries that he bought for two euros a kilo this morning, and he's now selling for one euro fifty. With cash so tight, most of the customers here see fruit as a luxury. A luxury the Greek government doesn't have is time, and the way ahead looks threatening. Huge payments are due to Greece's creditors, the country risks falling out of the Eurozone, and there's a referendum here on Sunday that could be the make or break of the Greek Prime Minister's career. Katia Adler, BBC News, Athens. So just to underline then, this is the uh, critical timetable for Greece and the Eurozone right now. In an hour's time, as I said, Greece is set to miss the deadline for a 1.6 billion euro repayment to the IMF. This coming Sunday, Greeks will vote in a referendum on a proposed new package of tax rises and uh, welfare cuts. And in a few weeks' time, Greece is due to make an even bigger repayment of 3.4 billion euros to the European Central Bank. Now, we'll discuss all of that uh, in a second with Robert Pesson, who's with me here, our economics editor. Uh, before I talk to Robert, we're going to go straight to Athens, and uh, Katia is there, our Europe editor. How much should we read into this proposed uh, last-minute deal, Katia, or should we just wait for the referendum on Sunday? Well, this is not the way things normally go here in international diplomacy. The Greek government has spent the last five months accused by its creditors of being ill-prepared, ill-advised and generally not serious about negotiations to try and keep Greece away from bankruptcy but inside the Eurozone. And then, as we've said, just hours before the bailout deal expires and a huge bill is owed to the IMF, sudden frantic activity, the proposal for a new third bailout deal, a late-night appeal tonight by the Deputy Prime Minister for an extension to the IMF loan and even a rumour that that referendum on Sunday disapproved of by the creditors could still be cancelled. It's chaotic, but it's not laughable because in the end, this is about people's lives. It's about the future of Greece and the Eurozone as a whole. So Eurozone finance ministers will talk to each other again tomorrow by telephone to decide how best to proceed. Uh, Katia, thanks very much. Robert's in the studio here. How do you rate the prospects right now of Greece staying within the Eurozone? Well, let's look first of all at this default that we're going to get in an hour's time. It was embarrassing enough for uh, Greece, a developed economy, to have to seek a bailout from the IMF in 2010 and 2012. How much more humiliating to be the first developed economy to fail to make a due payment, putting it on a par with 
Robert Mugabe's Zimbabwe and the Afghanistan of the Taliban. Um, now, but the reason it matters in an economic sense is because it puts the European Central Bank firmly on the spot. The European Central Bank turned off the additional funding for Greek banks on Sunday, as I revealed, and that was why Greek banks had to close on the Monday. However, the default under the ECB's rules means that it now has to decide, in effect, whether to demand some of its money back from those banks. Now, by changing what's known as the collateral requirements. Now, if it were to do that, possibly one bank at that point wouldn't just be frozen, as is currently the case, but would be bust. And that would be a serious escalation of this crisis and would tip Greece even further towards the euro exit. Which is why, of course, we've now got this frantic attempt by the Greek government, as we've heard from Katya, to try and reopen negotiations on a possible further bailout. Angela Merkel has said she's not having any of it till after the referendum. So right now, if you're in Greece or indeed in any part of the Eurozone, you are right to be feeling extremely anxious. OK, Robert, again, thanks very much, Robert Peston and Katya in Athens. And that's all from us. Now on BBC One, it's time for the news where you are. Have a good night.